We have a little sidebar, as you can see there during the jury selection, uh, getting a view at defense table there. And this defendant who is incarcerated and has been uh, since being arrested on this case, he was set to pilot a flight coming from Charlotte, North Carolina, when he was arrested after this grand jury indictment, but maintains his innocence. Um, we're going to hear a lot more as this rolls on. Let's listen back in. And this month, we will gladly accept that burden. <clears throat> and it's beyond reasonable doubt. Reasonable. It's not beyond all doubt. Does everyone see the distinction there? It's beyond reasonable doubt. What's reasonable to you? It's not beyond all doubt. Does everyone see that distinction? Let me see some head nods. <laughs> you guys had too much pizza at lunch. <laughs> do me a favor, how do you pronounce that pizza place? What is it? In Palazzari's. Uh, that's above my pay grade, I can't pronounce it. Uh, it's great pizza? Sorry. I'll try it out. Now, during this trial, you guys will hear uh, various forms of evidence. You will have, uh, evidence comes in different forms. In general, evidence comes in different forms. You got physical evidence, which could be photos, videos, weapons. You also have actual witness testimony. People that tell you what they saw or heard. <clears throat> And with witness testimony, you assess it, and then you decide if it meets proof beyond a reasonable doubt, if that makes sense to you. Okay? You assess a person's credibility. And that's what I want, what I want to get at, at right now, is credibility. You're going to hear from a lot of jurors this month. And it's going to be your job to assess their credibility. Okay, and how do you do that? You do that by relying on just your common sense. Just because you're in here and this is a legal case, it doesn't mean that you throw your common sense out the door. You use it every single day. We used it this morning, okay? We're using it now. So it's your job to assess the credibilities of those witnesses. Now, who here thinks that every witness that they hear from is telling the truth? Well, you don't know that yet. You need to hear what they're going to say, correct? Right? Who here thinks that a witness has never lied on the stand? Let me see some head nods. Okay. Why do people lie? Any answers? Fear? Okay. Sounds better than the truth. Sounds better than the truth? Okay. Get out of trouble. Get out of trouble? That's a big one. Take love. Take love one? Okay. Yeah. So, there's reasons why. And it's going to be your job to assess that person's credibility and decide whether someone's lying or where some, whether someone's telling the truth. Okay. Circumstantial evidence. That's another form of evidence. Does anybody know what that is? It's the easiest way I can explain circumstantial evidence. I like telling this, this example. Let's say you have a room and only one door to get in and there's a cookie jar in that room, right? You have a child and you let that child in that room. 
No one else is in that room except the child and the cookie jar. You then close the door. When you re-enter that room, and you know no one else has a, no one else has walked into that room, and you look in the cookie jar, and the cookies are gone. Who took the cookies? Child. Child, right? You then ask the child, "Let me see your hands." And he's got cookie crumbles on his hands. He's got cookie crumbles on his face. You ask the child, "Did you take the cookies?" What's he gonna say? No. 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 But what's the answer? Did he take the cookies? Yes. No you didn't see video that he took the cookies, right? You didn't see it yourself. You didn't hear from other witnesses that he took the cookies. But you have all the circumstantial evidence that he was the only one in the room, that there was no one else had gone in there. The cookie crumbles on his hands and his face. The fact that he was a child and probably didn't want to get in trouble, so he said he didn't take the cookies. All that pieced together is circumstantial evidence that leads you to one logical conclusion. All right, as you can see, we're still in the voir dire process in this case of Kentucky versus defendant Christian Martin. We're going to keep an eye on that process. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break because the Robert Durst case is set to resume right after this. This is Court TV Live, your front row seat to justice.